I'm gonna give you just two quick examples and I want you to see if you can use this result. Number one, let's use it in, let's go product rule. And number two, let's see if you can use it in chain rule. So example one that I'd like you to go ahead and write it down. Could you please, for me, differentiate, let's go with x squared tan inverse of x. So this is a, a classic old product rule. You know what this part will be, your u and your v. That's the first one I'd like you to do. And then the second one I'd like you to attempt is to differentiate, what shall we put in here? Hmm, let's not make it too difficult. Let's go 5x minus 3. That's chain rule, not product rule. Let me give you some time and you can have a go. This first one here, I didn't even finish it because it's kind of like, well, what else do I do after this? You can see, and by the way, when I'm in an exam context, even though I've done product rule like a million times before, I will still write u, v, and then when I go ahead and do this, I'll write v, u dash, u, v dash, except for here, I've got a fraction, right? So I was like, ah, eh, it's got one on the numerator, I think I'm okay to put these together. Are you content with that? Obviously, there's not really much to do. I mean, you could factorize and take out a factor of x, but at this point, because all it asks you to do is differentiate, there's kind of no reason to take that factor out. Maybe if you were like, find stationary points, then the factor is useful, but at the moment, derivative, I'm finished. Have a look at this working here. Does anyone want to raise any questions about any part of it, or does it feel okay to you? It's all right? Yeah? Got the, got the answer that I agree with. I will just say one tiny little thing, which is, See how I phrased this question to you, right? I said, here is a function. Please differentiate, right? This thing here doesn't have a name. It's not y, it's not f of x. So in your solution, if you're about to talk about a y or an f, an f dash, that kind of thing, it's up to you to define said function, right? It's like a real issue in particularly related rates questions where there's like a Y and an H and a V flying around. And it's like, where did all this come from, right? The question didn't define it, you defined it. So make sure if you're gonna use, like I, I prefer this notation rather than the F dash notation in this context, but you do whatever floats your boat. I wanted to talk in terms of dy on du, u and dx and all that kind of thing. And so I introduced Y. I introduced you as well for that matter, like so. Okay, and so it's a fairly straightforward chain rule. All right, now let's come back to this result for a minute because I said we were supposed to do two things with this derivative. The first thing was to say, what? This is crazy, right, that we get algebra. The second thing is, draw me a set of axes. We're gonna graph this thing, right, because all of you gave me these, um, these points of intuition. You looked at this graph of tan inverse and you said, the gradient should do these things, right? Well, we can find out if this one over one plus x squared things behaves the way we expect it to. MA, F1.1, uh, graphical relationships. We can graph this, we can graph it. If I didn't say anything, what would be the first thing you tried if the question was graph one over one plus x squared? Any suggestions? Yeah? Anyone want to rescue her? <laughs> yeah, at the back, go ahead. Nicely done. So normally, and that was actually a very unfair question for me to pose to all of you. Um, in the context of your course, graphing this used to just be an ex extension two. And so in order to sort of bring it down to our level a little bit, they'll scaffold this for you. There will be a part A. And that part A will be, graph me the denominator, right? Let's call this, 1 plus x squared, because one of the things you're supposed to be able to do is, from any given function, we could even give you some random picture, you don't even know what function it is, from that you could say part b, and they would usually say hence or otherwise, right? Um, graph it's reciprocal, because if you know what this looks like, you can draw some conclusions about what it looks like upside down, which we can do right now. 1 plus x squared, you know what kind of graph that is, what is that? That's a parabola. You've got a set of axes by now, go ahead and draw me. A parabola. What do you know about it? Apart from the fact that I've drawn it concave up, which is just for free. Can you tell me anything else about this? Y intercept is one. He said with a yawn. I don't blame you, it's a pretty basic fact, okay. Uh, do we need to know anything else about it? I think that's actually fine, right? If this is our f of x, what's our one over f of x gonna look like? Hmm. 
Well, let's actually go with that y intercept that you just suggested, right? Right there, the function is 1, so it's reciprocal. What's the reciprocal of 1 again? 1. Hmm. And then, as we go, say, to the right, this function here, f of x equals 1 plus x squared, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So the denominator is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. What happens when a denominator gets real large? The actual thing gets real small, right? So in fact, from here, it just drops, and then it gets really small, but does it ever pass through? It can't, because it's always positive, yeah? So in fact, we have this kind of asymptotic behavior happening on the right, okay? And one of the other things is 1 plus x squared, it's a function with symmetry. What, is it, what do we call this, by the way? It starts with an E. It's an even function. Even power, even function. So therefore, that shape we got on the right, we can replicate over here on the left. And here's, for completeness, that y equals 0 asymptote. Right? So this here is 1 over f of x. Now, I want you to go through these four dot points and see if they match with what we drew. We'll start here. Is this true? Yeah, of course it's true, because look, you're above the axis the whole time. Check. Is this true? Limit as x approaches positive and negative infinity tends to zero. Yeah, that's that asymptote we just talked about, right? Uh, what about this one? At the origin, is the derivative equal to 1? Yes, indeed. In fact, that was the very first thing that we saw. And then the last one, which we started with, actually, a point of inflection is not something we directly get from the gradient function. We usually go to the next derivative down, right? But that's easy to do. Look, here I have a stationary point, right? So when you, just be careful, a stationary point on the derivative. So when I differentiate a second time, what's going to happen here? Your second derivative will be equal to 0, which is that point of inflection. Well, I mean, it doesn't always guarantee a point of inflection, but in this case, you can test the concavity, blah, 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 and off you go, OK? Thumbs up, it all works.